Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for knife lovers to learn about knives and knife collecting and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco. Coming up, a promising new lineup from Schrade, a cool new way to open my Yojimbo 2, and we take a look at dedicated fighting knives. But first, uh, as always, got to get to my first show off of the week, and that is uh, what I'm carrying on my person today. Uh, this is my pocket check. And uh, when I'm done, I want you to type in what your pocket check is. What are you carrying? And uh, no embarrassment. Just tell me all of the knives you're carrying. I know there's probably more than one. Uh, and if not, let me let me hear about it. All right. So uh, what am I carrying today? I'm carrying one that it was probably the first expensive knife I got uh, after my Recon 1 days, when, when $60 to $75 on a Recon 1 was a good bit of change. Now, uh, it, I'm not saying it isn't now. I'm just saying uh, my Overton window has moved radically. Okay, so I'm carrying the knife that I swear to God I designed first, but uh, Ulrich Henneke got it to market first, and that is the Ulaza from uh, Spyderco. This is a really cool knife. That's a four and nearly a quarter inch blade. Uh, actually, no, this is a 4.125 inches, so four and an eighth and um, sort of unofficially a part of the police uh, model series. Now, the Spyderco police model with the four, uh, four and an eighth inch blade was really the first Spyderco that I ever saw. It was a, a dude at a bike shop in Philadelphia in, uh, I don't know, 1991 or something. And I was like, I was starstruck. I was like, oh, my God, how do I get one of these knives into my life? He's like, it's 125 bucks, dude. And I'm like, whoa. Uh, but. Same length, same overall um, long, slender uh, profile. Uh, well, very different profile, but but same sort of package. And um, it, it ends up that Ulrich Henneke, a, a German knife designer and maker, is a former police officer over there. I, actually, I don't know if he's former, but uh, a law enforcement guy over there in Germany. So it kind of makes sense that his design, which... Uh, has sort of the same dimensions as the police would sort of loosely fit in the police uh, lineup. To me, it's uh, an incredibly beautiful knife. It reminds me of the Filipino blades with that angle of the blade to the handle and also the recurve and its overall sinuousness. Um, great for slashing because of the recurve and the angle it presents, almost a pistol grip, almost. And uh, But that center line is right in. Uh, or that point is right in the center line. You don't have to torque your wrist so much to get the, the point to go exactly where you want it to go. So really cool design. This is uh, from, from Seki city, Japan. You can, you can see all the hallmarks of that really nice construction. The only thing is, is this one, this particular one was kind of a lemon. Uh, my brother has one and his is perfect. Like most uh, Seki city knives, uh, you know, from Spyderco are this one just I could never, ever quite get it right. And you say, what's wrong with it? I don't know. Something I, I have a feeling the lock bar itself, uh, the, the spring that holds the lock bar, something it's not quite right. Like uh, could never quite break it in, but I still love it and rarely carry it, but was inspired to today. So glad I had that in the pocket. Um, didn't need it for anything, but it was there nonetheless. Uh, also on me today in the three o'clock position in the waistband was today's featured Vix blade. And that is um, one I've been carrying quite a bit recently. And it's the rib splitter drug. You say, what's a drug you ask? And, and uh, it is, I had to look it up. It is a uh, sort of undead creature from Norse, the Norse sagas, uh, which is cool. I mean, that's just, Super cool. The reason I haven't pulled this out of the sheath is that I want to show you that rib splitter knives. And I I have only complimented this gentleman uh, through Instagram DMs. I have yet to meet him. I don't even know his name yet. And I would like to. Uh, but he makes one of the best sheaths ever. And I say that every new knife I get, which is great because that means that uh, knife makers are really paying attention to the fact that the sheath is truly, uh, you know, 
mm, a quarter of the recipe. I don't know. It's a big part of the recipe and having a nice sheath that works perfectly. Uh, man, that's ideal. And this thing, I don't know. He must have like a, a vacuum fit thing on his, uh, of, I, I don't know. It's, he's got great Kydex. I'm going to, I'm going to stop there with the, with the sheath and just show you the drog. Such a beautiful, um, sort of roughly hewn looking chisel ground Pical style knife with that sort of outreaching blade that I love so much that really takes advantage of the human, uh, all the hinging arcing joints that we have. It just, the point is in the perfect spot for, you know, thrust or for stabbing for downward stabbing. Um, and you know, so this is sort of a self-defense knife, but just a beautiful one. Uh, check out rib splitter knives on Instagram. He does a, weekly drop i believe on his new website and he's been trying out a lot of new blade shapes but they are all um centered around that pical style that tip down edge in uh concept and they're so cool they're beautiful to look at and uh, they would be very effective this one has a very smooth g10 handle uh that fits by the way works great under the shirt you know, the um, part of me is like it should have traction. It's it's meant for you know self defense, but the other thing is is if it's got too much traction, and and it's under the shirt and it catches on the shirt, I'm not going to wear it as much. I'm not going to carry it as much um, because it's going to. And and how often does it get used? Time you know compared to how often would it get worn, which is never used and carried frequently. So the smooth uh, wins when, when it all washes out, I think, just because I would have it on me more. So that's what I was carrying on me today. What were you carrying? Uh, I, I love to know. And, and let, let me know everything, all the knives. And uh, that's another great way for me to uh, learn about what's new and what's cool out there. And so I can get myself one. Hmm. Okay, so before we move on, um, I want to show something I was uh, working on this past weekend. Uh, finally got around to it. My brother-in-law, James, he's an awesome dude, just a great guy. I really lucked out. Um, uh, and he here, uh, okay, so for years he's been saying, yeah, Bob, I'd love to have one of those knives you've been making. But you know, uh, for me, I come and go with the with this as a hobby. And uh, but he's always wanted a big sort of butcher knife that has that big upswept, dramatic, almost uh, piratey sort of curve. And uh, he's in the summertime. He's really into cooking meats and stuff. And so um, I designed this for him. I'm calling it his barbecue Bowie butcher knife. So it's sort of a butcher knife, sort of a Bowie knife. And uh, he can use it to to cut the barbecue he's been working on in the summer. Um, this is AEBL and it is very broad. It's what is it? Uh, it's like two and a quarter inches broad, two and a half inches at the, at the peak of that clip. And I am going to, and it, but it's quite thin and I'm going to, uh, I think what I'm going to do is right hand chisel grind it. So it'll be chisel ground like a Japanese chef's knife on this side and flat on this side. And because he's right handed. So when he cuts down straight on something, it will fall off that way because it's it's an asymmetrical grind. And uh, to be honest, uh, I'm not I'm not so sure with what I have and with the, um, you know, grinding a blade is a perishable skill like most. So I'm not so sure I could I wouldn't jack this up if I tried to fully flat grind V grind it, uh, which would be a cool challenge. But uh, I think for this, I'll go chisel. And uh, he already has one of my chisel ground kitchen knives and loves it. So I'm just going to stick with that. So I wanted to show this off. I'm very happy with the profile. This is the best this knife will look, by the way, because as I move on and I'm going to have it heat treated, hopefully uh, I can get uh, Alex Steingraber to heat treat it for me. And um, it will not look as good when I'm done. Well, uh, you know, it'll look different. Let me put it that way. I'm sure it'll be half as thin because I'll, I'll uh, you know, have to be compensating as i grind and uh, all right anyway so check that out I'll, i will have that uh, updates on that you know i know you'll be on tenter hooks waiting to see all right i want to thank uh new gentleman junkie larry elizondo larry thank you so much for joining us um it's great to have you i just sent his stickers out to him uh go go to go to uh, patreon and check out the the various things we have to offer um we just 
now are offering annual membership. So you can just pay in one fell swoop and you save um, 12% in doing so. Uh, but also, you know, you get uh, you get unique exclusive interview extras from every uh, interview we do. You can get entered into a knife drawing. You get stickers and all sorts of fun stuff. And actually, I'm about to put up a actually by the time this goes live, it will all have already gone up. But knife sale videos um, shot one this weekend. I'm going to be uploading. And uh, there you go. So come take a look over there at Patreon. It's well worth your while. Uh, I mentioned something about a knife drawing. Let me show you the very, very special knife that will be the gentleman junkie knife drawing this month which is next uh tomorrow as a matter of fact uh, so here we go this is a collector knives prototype not even an exclusive this is a prototype this has not gone to the presses yet don't know if it ever will uh i've shown this off a bunch of times this is a very stout custom leather case that was made for mike latham owner of collector knives and designer of this knife this is a modern version of the swing guard lockback, uh, made famous by Case with their cheetah. This is an updated version made by Lion Steel of Italy. Lion Steel. So you have your M390 nearly fully flat ground blade, which is wickedly sharp. Uh, you have uh, nail necks on both sides, a beautifully shaped blade that does widen towards the tip, giving you a sort of uh, well, giving you a straight edge, but the effect of a recurve, which is quite nice. You have your uh, swing guard, which has absolutely zero play. They have engine engineered out all of the play in that swing guard. And look at how, how nicely it nestles in with the uh, lines of the handle. You open it up, boom, you've got a guard there. Uh, you know, for, for whatever reason, you would want to guard your fingers, but you can also reach your thumb across and, and use it like this. Uh, for heavier work. The the lock is very, very stout. There's zero play. I know in a lot of traditionally styled lockbacks, you'll get some play in there. Not in this one. This is uh, bank vault tight, as they say. Uh, you've got uh, titanium liners and bolsters here, and then carbon fiber on the handle. This is a prototype that Mike Latham sent me probably a year and a half ago with that beautiful gunstock Fox uh, prototype, which is now uh, something you can buy right there on there on on collector knives. But he sent them both to me and I just took them. <laughs> I took them. He did not explicitly say you must give one away. It was sort of implied and I did not pick up on that uh, much to my own benefit. I've had this thing in my collection for over a year. And then when I spoke to him recently, he's like, you got to give that thing away, man. I didn't just like give you two really awesome prototypes. It's like, okay, so here it is. This is your opportunity to get in on this awesome Lion Steel prototype designed by Mike Latham. And who knows if it will ever be made. You might be the only one on the block to have a real stout and sturdy Italian made American designed swing guard lockback. All right, coming up, uh, we are going to take a look at a promising lineup of holders from Schrade, and then we'll get to uh, state of the collection. Uh, but first, make sure you go over and check out Patreon and see the kind of things that you can luck out with. Uh, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon, or you can scan right here, thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast, and now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Schrade came back on the scene hot and heavy about six years ago. Uh, with a bunch of folders that were very inexpensive, robust, uh, attracted a lot of attention uh, because you could get a lot of them and get a lot of work done with them. But some of them were some pretty corny designs, uh, over-designed, fancy, you know, too many notes kind of thing. Um, so I, I, I've always had respect for Schrade, and especially with their comeback knives, uh, but just not interested because just not up my alley. Uh, a lot of cool fixed blade knives coming from them too. But this year, for 2022, they have this amazing lineup, a uh, uh, presumably amazing lineup of new knives using great materials. This first one, the Radoc, uh, is a very appealing sort of worn cliff. I mean, it looks like a raven's beak. It's a very cool looking blade. This is S35VN and their, what are they calling it? The pivot lock system. It's their axis lock, basically. This is leaps and bounds better 
and miles away from the designs that they came back with. Now, uh, you know, uh, like a lot of uh, people have learned, like damn designs, <clears throat> sometimes it's difficult to just spring onto the scene with with high end materials. Maybe you have to earn the public trust again, you know, with lower end materials, show that, you know, prove that you can do uh, all that you say that you can do in 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 lesser materials and less uh, less expensive knives and then graduate into something like this. I love the look of this knife. I want to check this out. Scrolling down is probably the most appealing one uh, to me in this lineup. Oh, by the way, that Radic is 3.75 inches. How beautiful is that? But uh, this one right here is so cool. This is an automatic Tanto. That's a three and a half inch blade Tanto. Look at the the profile of this. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna reference a knife company I'm not sure if anyone still remembers that or, you know, maybe some fixed blade aficionados. But to me, this looks like a folding Entrec knife. Uh, Entrec made some really cool knives. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure if they're still around, but fixed blade um, tactical knives that in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, I was just those were my dream knives. And to me, this harkens back to that. Uh, but but. Just a gorgeous a straight edge Tanto, uh, Americanized Tanto with the facets and a really nice looking swedge on the drop uh, drop point. You got a really nice uh, forward grip, uh, a forward thumb grip. And then that pommel looks great, too. It looks like it's optimized for thumb capping. Uh, this to me looks like a super cool, great knife. I just hope that they did it right, you know, that it's built well. Uh, they're using the right materials. Scrolling down, there are a couple of other really interesting things we got here. Um, uh, this thing, uh, this knife to me is not so appealing, but it's got a, a very nice looking Tanto blade. And they're really going all out with the look of this, this knife with the bolster and the axis style lock, the pivot lock system or whatever they're calling it. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's an axis lock and that black and white G10. Uh, let's scroll down, if you will, Jim. Breaking the fourth wall. What do you think? Oh, that's what it is. This this uh, Bally song to me looks like a like direct competition with Kershaw and uh, and their their Bally song. It looks very similar, as a matter of fact. Uh, so it'd be interesting to check this out. Uh, I learned that Schrade has a whole line of Bally songs that I didn't know about. If you look at the tang of this, you see uh, you see best of of all these pictures. They it seems they have a new logo. So that seems to be the new Schrade logo. And I guess that's an S if you turn your head in one way or another. Um, but interesting. So very, very excited about this new uh, line of Schrade. Um, you know, they're an American, they're a New York brand, and I want to see them doing doing good things. So we will see. Uh, next up is from Hinderer Knives. This thing is got to get into my life this is the new project x knife project x unveiled by hinderer uh this past week he sent it out to a select few um you know uh, knife nerds online and they had i was not a part of that uh he i don't know he ignores me i i reach out rick come on the show i even call and they must think i'm a stalker but anyway take a look at this thing this is gorgeous so this lands right in the perfect spot between the XM24 with its 4-inch blade and the XM18 with its 3.5-inch blade. This Project X knife with its double-peaked clip-point blade is right at 3.75 inches, which is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Uh, you got a handle that, to me, looks a bit like an old Al Polkowski handle. Uh, just a gorgeous uh, single choil. And then you have this long, um, widening handle to, to a little bird's beak that keeps you firmly locked in there a great thing they did here with this knife is round out that flipper tab you know the flipper tabs all right i'm gonna hate on hinderer for a second but you know that i love hinderer <laughs> a lot uh and and that is that their flipper tabs are painful but to me that was always part of the price of admission you know <laughs> besides that hefty hefty price tag uh you just have to suck it up and use that flipper tab well here they rounded it out it looks like it will be one quarter the pain that you uh, that you pay for with the other one. So um, looking forward to that. I am very excited about this Project X knife. Not sure what they're going to call it. Uh, who knows? Maybe they go with Project X. Uh, but when this thing is available, I'm going to have to sell some knives. I'm going to I'm going to have to save up old school. Save up. Maybe, or maybe it'll come out at Blade Show. Maybe I'll maybe I'll pick one up at Blade Show. 
you know, I just started uh, thinking about that. That's not that far away. And I have not, uh, I have not adequately saved money. So I'm going to have to start doing that in the knife slush fund. So we got some exciting new knives from Schrade coming our way. We got this amazing project decks from Rick Hinderer knives. Uh, if you're familiar, uh, you know that if you like the design, it will be excellent. Hopefully, that's what happens with, with the Schrade knives, too. Okay, still to come, State of the Collection. We're going to take a look at a really cool new device I got aftermarket, and then we'll take a look at some fixed blade fighters. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Okay, so this just arrived. This week, I've been carrying it nonstop. This is a Quaken from our friend Josh Mason at Bright for War. Bright for War Knives. Josh was on the show recently, and uh, we talked a lot about his EDC fixed blades made in the traditional Japanese style. And this is the Quaken. And I've been carrying this around my neck. Surprise, surprise. Uh, I didn't think I would. I thought it was a little... You know, the footprint seems like it might be a little large for around the neck at six inches, but um, it's very light and carries really nicely. OK, so I have already used this knife a bit. <laughs> I, I, I laugh, but really I'm crying inside. You can see right towards the tip. I scuffed it already. I was cutting down a uh, cat food box and I don't know, I gl glazed by a staple or something, got a little scratch on there, which saddens me but really now it's like getting that first dent in your new car now i'm just gonna go all out road warrior with this thing uh it is very 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 thin it's ground ridiculously thin almost zero ground um so basically what josh does is he'll he'll uh zero grind it and then reprofile it slightly and then put the secondary edge on so this thing is wickedly sharp. And then if you look, it's got natural, actual ray skin uh, under there. Okay, nice focus there. So that uh, that sort of ochre color under the, you know, that 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 is real ray skin from a tiger ray or something like that, I think. And uh, then this nicely hardened and epoxied sukamaki wrap and a Turkish knot to stop your hand from sliding up on that blade all of this uh, fabric here all of these uh all of this cord wrap has an epoxy on it that hardens it if you look in cross section i talk about this a lot now i love that japanese cord wrap because you get peaks that alternate from side to side and that's so perfect for uh not only burying with pressure into the fat of your palm but your fingers reach around and grab between those peaks and you get such an amazing purchase i, I have really come to re-respect cord wrap for a long time i thought it was just people <laughs> who didn't want to make handles and they're like i'll just throw some paracord on. well there's it's a difference between just throwing some paracord on like the guys in fortune and fire who've run out of time and doing something like this a very artful traditional japanese wrap on a wickedly sharp knife this this knife reminds me of, did anyone see the movie, the Coen Brothers movie, The Man Who Wasn't There? Uh, there's a scene with James Gandolfini who plays uh, Billy Bob Thornton's wife's boss, who's a real scumbag. And he's a veteran of the war uh, in Japan. And he has a little knife like this. And that's what, well, I won't spoil it, but uh, you should see that movie. It's great. And this little knife reminds me of that little knife. Uh, great sheath. Great, great sheath with a great snap in so uh, i just wanted to show that uh so this is the uh <laughs> this is the copus lv i just have to show it off at the same time that i had josh cord wrap for me with purple ray skin now that is faux ray skin you can tell it's just very different and uh but beautiful thank you josh for cord wrapping that and uh the man this knife he made is awesome go check out bright for war on Instagram, Bright for War is a quote from a cool poem. I can't remember what it was, though. What poem? Go check out the podcast. He talks all about it there. All right. Next up is a great new way to open my Yojimbo 2. You all know what I'm talking about, I'm sure, at this point. Uh, let me show it off. Here it is. Right under the knife cam. You will see this thing here is a pocket wave. 
an aftermarket pocket wave for the Yojimbo 2 made by a company called 5x5 Combat Solutions. And what a really awesome device this is. Okay, as you can see, uh, or if you can't see, it is a little milled out piece of aluminum that is shaped like a hook that locks into the top part of the blade just north of the opening hole on the Yojimbo 2. And this is sp specifically for the Yojimbo 2. Of course, I tried it on my Yojimbo. It didn't fit. It's a totally different uh, profile up there. But this little piece of aluminum screws right onto the blade and gives you the ability to auto deploy this as you pull it out of your pocket, much like a, an Emerson wave. And uh, it looks cool too, <laughs> which is a good, uh, always a good benefit. But when I saw this, I was curious, um, first of all, this Yojimbo 2 is a dedicated self-defense knife. Of course, it makes an excellent utility knife. If you're careful with that tip, it's very thinly hollow ground. Uh, so, th But this is intended as a self-defense knife. So why not have an auto deploy out of the pocket feature, uh, much like the Emerson Wave on it? I was curious, though, as to whether it would jack up the ergonomics. A big part of the uh, ergonomics of this Yojimbo 2 is the big swale on the back of the blade where I like to press or where you're supposed to press your thumb into really gives you a solid purchase, uh, even with no jimping. Well, this kind of gives you the same thing. It just backs you up a little bit and, and it feels really good uh, to those Yojimbo 2 lovers out there who might be concerned about if this will negatively affect the ergonomics. I, I say it doesn't. It actually creates a larger wedge uh, to resist uh, forward motion of the hand onto the blade and the thrust. And uh, I don't know, I think that's a welcome a welcome bit of ergonomics on, on a knife uh, with that, and if you're carrying it for that intention. And if not, it's just cool to have. <laughs> the thing about this with all waved knives, all auto pocket deploying knives, including all the cold steels with the big thumb plates, including all Emerson's, including all spider codes with the Emerson went in this and the, and uh, the snaggle tooth MFs when you draw them out and you don't want to auto deploy it, put your finger over the blade. Just do this and you pull it out that way. It won't accidentally snag. This one is so snaggy. You, you know, you, you have to make sure that you don't, snag with this so just be sure to cover it keep the keep the blade closed cover it with your finger as you pull it out of your pocket if you don't want it to automatically open because if you don't want it to automatically open that can be an unpleasant surprise i mean look at that blade okay so that is the five by five combat solutions uh, pickpocket it is called a pickpocket and actually they have their own term for it uh it is the pickpocket enhanced access module I'm going to put this into the camera. The Pickpocket Enhanced Access Module by 5x5 Combat Solutions. Check it out. It was a, it was a, uh, I saw them, uh, someone had it tagged on, uh, on their page on Instagram. Don't remember who. Just followed the link. Uh, got the thing in like two days. It was a great customer service situation. So check them out. They're definitely an awesome company to deal with. Today, I want to talk all about fixed blade fighters. These are dedicated fighting knives, uh, fixed blade fighting knives. You say, Bob, don't, don't you talk about this all the time? Well, maybe, but I know that I haven't done this uh, dedi dedicated fighter conversation. I've done combat classics that include some knives like this. I've done uh, double-edged fixed blades. I've done EDC fixed blades, but th this right here is the grouping of my favorite fixed blade fighters ranging from small to quite large. So uh, let's get started with the small. Now the small uh, knives happen to be optimized for a uh, reverse grip. And uh, the larger you get, the less uh, likely you're going to be able to control a knife in that fashion. Uh, so the smaller ones are, are, are definitely more optimized for reverse grip. First one uh, we've seen already. I was just, uh, showing this off. This is the Elvia by uh, Copus Designs, and it is a collaboration with Ed Calderon, uh, who made this style of knife famous. Uh, you can check out his blog, uh, uh, the uh, Ed's Manifesto, and it's very interesting. He's uh, He was law enforcement on the Mexican side of the drug enforcement game, 
uh, not that it's a game, and uh, carried around a fruit knife uh, that his mom used to carry uh, quite frequently. And uh, so he sort of has taken advantage of that design and the usefulness and has a bunch of people have made their versions of the Elvia. This one, um, 154 cm steel and uh, this GRN handle. <clears throat> Excuse me, I had it wrapped by uh, Josh Mason, Bright for War, and uh, love that purple purple faux ray skin so that's right there uh the sheath is excellent i'll, I'll show the sheath briefly briefly for each one of these because it is a large part of the um of the combination here uh this and uh, when you see this little scoop on a on a knife sheath that's for dropping in the pocket and when you pull it out you hook the sheath on the inside of your pocket and draw the knife so you can walk around without it being uh visible basically uh, I like that feature. Next up is the JB Knife and Tool Ditch Pick. And uh, you see this one quite a bit. I carry this a lot. It's nice and light and thin. It's got a great handle. This one has the uh, discrete carry concepts clip, my absolute favorite way to carry a fixed blade. Uh, I carry it in, uh, in the waistband about 3 o'clock, sometimes 4. And uh, I like to use these clips in particular, these super springy, uh, discrete carry concepts clip let's look at the knife the knife is uh, again optimized for that tip down edge in call style grip uh, this one though is sharpened on the outside also as you can see uh, why not right double your effectiveness uh, get get the guy coming and going uh, this is a very very thin thin steel that uh, over there at jb knife and tool they test quite a bit they wanted to make sure that this Thin, thin steel could uh, could handle you know could could handle a task if it if one came to it. So they take this very thin, very springy steel. It's a sixteenth of an inch thick, and they do stuff like pound it into two by fours and stuff to make sure that uh, it's not just thin and light, but it's super capable. Uh, so this is I have to say this uh, it's about steak knife thin, like cheap steak knife thin, and uh, I got to say it's probably the thinnest blade I have. Really like it, and that handle is very grippy g10 and sometimes that's a problem because sometimes that can snag onto your um, shirt if you're trying to wear it under your under your waistband and then it can start to snag and get uncomfortable but also show everyone that you've got a knife under there uh in this case the way the the handle is shaped you don't run into that uh which is great the same thing can be said about this next one this is a dirk pinkerton handmade dirk pinkerton um knife I got it at Blade Show 2021. Uh, what a great moment it was to see this across a crowded room and to not be intercepted on my way to it. Uh, first of all, in the sheath, another great sheath. This one does not accommodate the discrete carry concepts clips, at least none of the ones I have. So I have an ulti clip on there. This is the one I got at the show to carry this same knife. So I leave it on there. Um, not a huge fan of the ulti clips. They're okay. Uh, but uh, the sheath is excellent. This is Nitro V, double ground. Look at, if you cannot see this, uh, let me just say, the, ed the edge bevels are so clean and so perfect. And then they're PVD coated, and it's just glass smooth. Uh, Dirk Pinkerton is respected among other knife makers as being an exquisite, uh, being exquisite with a grinder and being able to really uh, make really handmade perfectly symmetrical blades and this is certainly no exception i love the cheerful uh orange you know that red orange yellow handle is uh not only grippy uh, it's a canvas micarta not only grippy and effective but just looks nice and there's some cognitive dissonance between the happy cheeriness of the handle and that wickedness of that uh, double-edged blade and i like that uh you know, why not cast confusion into your enemies as you vanquish them? Uh, that is the Cave Bear by Dirk Pinkerton. Next up is, hmm, perhaps the oldest in this whole collection. And uh, this is my only push dagger. And maybe I need to remedy that and get a custom push dagger from someone who makes cool <laughs> push daggers. Maybe that should be a new mission, because why not? Uh, this is the Spyderco. Uh, spider co this is the cold steel safekeeper 2 uh this i've had for a number of years i don't know i would say at least 20 
Uh, but I don't know. I would have to dig back in my memory bank. Uh, really, you know, it speaks for itself. Uh, the the push dagger uh, I, is a Western thing, but based on the Eastern conjars, or what are they called? Ah, uh, sorry, I'm not I'm not remembering right now. I think maybe they're called conjars, but the the uh, push daggers that they have it it was a a bar on both sides of the forearm with a bar that went through your hand, and then there was a big blade. And uh, it was a formidable battle blade. This was something uh, more that you tucked in your cummerbund as a riverboat gambler in the West and pulled out in uh, in altercations. Uh, the push dagger is is excellent because you get all of the power of your of your punch behind that blade without having to change your wrist angle at all. And uh, literally, it is a you know you just use a punch. Uh, this is a three and a half inch hollow ground double edge blade, it's extremely sharp. And a great thing about this is that they're very hard to disarm. Um, not impossible, I'm sure. Uh, but it would take <laughs> you would get cut a lot disarming this thing because the handle is completely hidden. And the only thing that presents itself is a blade that protrudes. This one is pretty big. I, I it, I wouldn't mind having one that was a little shorter and a little closer to the fingers, to be honest. Uh, but the grivery, this this uh, not, yeah, this very grippy, rubbery handle, is contoured and wide enough, broad enough that it does not um, does not move around in the hand at all. You could see how a smaller handle or a thinner handle would have this thing going back and forth. But just an absolutely dedicated uh, knife for the for fighting and a very unique shape this knife was uh, the first time i ever saw this knife in particular was in the movie platoon um when uh uh the the character played by Berenger, tom Berenger, carries one of those on his on his uh load-bearing equipment and he he slices uh charlie sheen across the face with it um I was impressed by it then. I still love it. And uh, but he had it in a leather sheath. Uh, the very first cold steels were in leather sheaths. I like the update, especially for this knife to Kydex. Next up is a custom knife. Uh, one of one of my uh, first custom fixed blade knives. This is made by Ken Vihikite of Black Rock Knives. This is the Monkey Thumper, and it's a karambity knife. Uh, again, awesome sheath. This is a big enough knife that I cannot get away with carrying this in my waistband uh, without having this kind of poke me in the ribs when I'm sitting down. So this one I have carried a belt style with that uh, in scout, you know, on the back, small on my back with the handle upward. And it actually carries pretty well that way. Now, I, I had it at <laughs> carrying it at work once and leaning forward because you know, getting close up to the screen, I was editing something and it poked out from under my vest. And my friend came in. He's like, yo, <laughs> you have a big knife on your back. And so I don't carry this one as much as as I'd like to. It, these winter seasons are better, though. Uh, so this, like I said, is a karambity affair. And ordinarily, uh, that top edge is not sharpened. Uh, of course, I opted to have it sharpened. And man, he did a great job. Sometimes a swedge sharpening is hard to get uh, sharp because of the obliqueness of the angle. Uh, but he really nailed it it's very sharp now this knife i rarely use like a karambit you know uh people are tempted to stick their pinkies in there i i, I would never uh in in forward grip i i'd be very hesitant to stick my pinky in any sort of hole like that uh i keep it like this the shape here is perfect as a pommel and then it's pointy and you have a sort of puño uh, uh you can you can Use that as a blunt pain compliance instrument. Uh, but here you got really awesome jimping. And, and if you come way up high, you have a nice thumb swale here. Um, and a nicely shaped and bellied blade. Very thin behind the edge. It's a, quite a broad blade. Almost, uh, well, more than half the way up ground. And a really nice handle. Each blade, each handle with Ken Vahikite has its own sort of... Uh, uh, fingerprint no two handles are the same no two blades are the same carrying that texture which is kind of like jimping it feels like all the way around and then in reverse grip this knife is awesome too uh it presents the blade at a great angle for punching uh hammer fist punching uh outward 
uh, kind of like a Pical style, if you will, with that with the angle of the handle to the blade. But then you also have this this ability to backslash and forward slash. Again, I wouldn't use the ring, but if you do, uh, because my hand is a little small for this to use that ring, I would want it to be a little little more uh, brought in. But if you are into doing that and you flip it out, you have a great shape to this ring for stopping and halting the, the momentum. Uh, and then you could use this uh, back edge for percussive hits. And then, of course, you flip it around and then use it as a knife that way. I, For me, not really. Um, I mean, it, I, I have flipped it around a bit, but it's just a little too big for me to be a karambit. Uh, and I and I like the way it feels just as a regular uh, small fighting blade. So there you go. That's the Black Rock Knives Monkey Thumper. Uh, made by Ken Avihikite. He makes some really cool stuff. Uh, okay, next up is uh, I got two knives from Topps. Uh, surprise, surprise, that fall into this category. Topps makes a lot of dedicated fighting knives, and many of them are in the smaller category, which I like because that means you can carry them easier and more often. First up is a uh, Lacey Zabo design. He design. If you don't know Lacey Zabo, um, look him up. He's got some incredible designs uh, very unique and he's got a unique past in law enforcement and martial arts and such and his knives are very combative and self defensey uh and this is no exception uh this is the felony stop and uh look at uh, if you can, if you can see this it speaks for itself it's a pistol grip it's sort of set up in a pistol grip but it's a dagger it's a small carryable dagger uh you've got a primary edge of three and uh three and three quarters inches and then a top edge of about two about two inches on top both wickedly sharp and you have this amazingly jimped thumb swale with that nice big tops jimping there which you bury your finger in and there is no worry about that thumb sliding up onto that secondary edge it fits in the hand like it's, I don't know, it just melts right into the hand, as you can see. And this uh, curved handle is uh, not only uh, curved in this sort of pistol grip style, but it's also at the very pommel, nicely, nicely rounded so that it doesn't poke your ribs. It doesn't, it doesn't rub your love handles wrong. It's just nice and soft. And my card is a naturally sort of warm material. It's This is a very comfortable carry. Now, I have begun, I used to carry it in the small of my back, oriented this way, so that I would reach back and pull it out and draw it and have it in this uh, uh, forward grip. But I've carried, begun to carry it um, right hand on my hip so that I draw it like this and have it like in reverse grip, like this. Because... Um, First of all, that's kind of where my mind is right now with all the Pakal style stuff I talk about. But it presents the uh, this knife presents the uh, blade and the point in a similar angle. Also, it gives you this this thumb swale to trap limbs with. Now you can trap with this knife uh, in the reverse grip. So it's a it's a really great design and it's exotic but practical. And I just love this thing. Ten ninety five steel quarter inch. Uh, no, 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 uh, uh, not quarter inch. Um, five sixteenth. No. Uh, <laughs> oh, what is it? It is. Uh, I'm looking at it here. Oh, it is a quarter inch. It's a quarter inch thick, but with all the daggery grinds, it tapers. Um, sorry for my for my math. Ill, uh, <laughs> illiteracy. I can't even speak. All right. So I'm going to put this down. This is uh, uh, linen micarta, by the way. Nicely warm and has taken on my hand funk, which I love because it's starting to get that nummy look. Uh, yes, I did just say that. Okay, next up is a Topps knife uh, also, and this was a recent release uh, two years ago. This is the Rapid Strike. Such a cool knife. This one was designed by Leo Espinoza, as are many of their best knives. Uh, he's he's the head honcho over there. This one ships. Uh, you can either get it single-edged or double-edged. Naturally, I opted for the double-edged. Um, 154 CM, that's blasted. 
And they do a lot of their self-defense knives in 154 now because they figure it's being carried close to the person. I mean, this is what I'm assuming. It's being carried close to the person. Oftentimes, uh, you can sweat through um, through Kydex. You know, moisture can get in through the Kydex, uh, you know, through the seams and such. I have uh, rusted the edge of the felony stop before. This is a 1095 coated but i have rusted the edge just in carrying it in the summer so i think that's why they have gone to 154 on a lot of their self-defense knives this one is great so incredibly sharp uh the one thing i didn't like about it was the handle was a little too long for me so i took off about uh, three quarters of an inch or about a half inch it tapered off into a pyramidal glass breaker which is a fine idea but I'm just out of place on this knife. I think uh, maybe you could use it to to strike someone with, but I would prefer a shorter handle rounded off instead of pointy so that I could carry it and not have it poke my my ribs when I sit down. So I, I ground it down, rounded it off. At first, I thought I took too much off, and then I started carrying it like this, and it feels great. And let's face it, if you carry a knife like this for self-defense, it's or you're not pulling it out unless you want to check it out or practice with it or anything. So you got to make sure it's comfortable to carry. And uh, so this is now, and it also fits in my hand perfectly. And of course you've got that awesome, awesome double edge bayonet grind. Love this knife. Uh, that is the rapid strike by tops knives. Uh, next up is <laughs> I love this thing. I carry this thing all of the time. Uh, this is my Kramer Custom Knives Voodoo, made by Eric Kramer, uh, a, a, a just a, a luminary of the custom knife fixed blade world, and he's got some um, some incredible custom made folders out in the wild. I know Dirk has one um, that I would love to get my hands on, and, and I know he's begun to make some uh, again. Uh, he was forced into making folders again because he promised a friend if his if his friend accomplished something that he would make one the friend did so he's like damn it now i gotta make make these knives again because they're complicated and difficult but uh they're beautiful this one here is the voodoo uh his uh persian uh everyday carry persian upswept blade i think it's a, i think of it as a clip point but yeah it's a persian i had him sharpen the clip of this and he did a very good job like i said before it's hard to get an oblique angle like a like a short swedge like that nice and sharp and he did he did it of course that swedge is not as sharp as this really thinly hollow ground edge which is extremely sharp slicey and slashy this uh top edge is more of a gougy terry kind of uh sharp very very thin all all together very thin package uh thin micarta there nicely jimped here and here so that it nestles into your palm and you really you really feel it in there i uh, personally would not have minded if he jimped this but it's certainly not a deal breaker my thumb isn't long enough to to really get on there uh interesting when i was talking to eric on the show he was talking about how he was uh designing he was in the coast guard and had a lot of friends in the navy and he was designing uh knives for people who 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 use them in a combat situation and at first he was making these giant sort of rambo knives really really you know uh robust looking large fixed blade knives and his friends were coming back to him like these are really cool but i can't carry this on i gotta carry tons of stuff and uh, you know a two pound knife isn't isn't effective uh it's not something i'm going to carry plus in a fight it's too much and so he started to slim it down and make it smaller and this was one of those uh one of those designs that they really gravitated towards this he has one called the libre fighter uh that it has it's basically the same up to here, but then it's sort of a Warncliffe. Really want to get my hands on one of those, uh, but made for the Libra fighting uh, style. I think he's done a, quite a bit of that. So love this knife. Very thin. Very nice. This also is 154 CM, I believe, and just carries like a dream, especially with that thin and rounded off handle. Okay, next up. Now we're getting into some of the bigger bigger knives. These are all knives that I carry. Now we're getting into dedicated fighters that I do not carry. This one I did a little bit when I first got it, but it's just a little too heavy and a little too little too large. 
this is my attention to detail mercantile medium fighter. It's it's wearing leather by my brother, a beautiful sheath my brother made uh, for me. This is so that I could slide it into my belt. That didn't actually quite work out so well. So he's going to build me a, a leather frog so I could wear it uh, scout style. But here it is. Now, this to me is um, like if you were an underground, like a, a very classy underground competitive knife fighter, you know, uh, like in the movie High Art or, or you know, something like that. Uh, or like 13 Zemetti, except with knives instead of guns. This would be your knife. Or if you were some sort of a classy assassin, this would be your knife. Uh, this is S35VN uh, with brass liners, brass hardware, and tortoise shell. Absolutely beautiful. Made to my specifications uh, in those terms. I just love the uh, tortoise shell. And then this coated blade is just gorgeous it it is very thinly hollow ground on both uh, bevels and sharpened here i picked it up from his shop he lives close to me here in virginia one two three four five and a half inches uh long that blade is i picked it up in his shop i said can you make it double edge he says are you sure i said yes and then he asked me again are you sure are you sure i said yes and he said okay let's do it and he made it double edge for me uh, you know, since I don't carry this around and uh, I am not a, a high class competitive knife fighter on the circuit, so I don't have to worry about this getting taken away from me. I just kind of keep it at home. Uh, beautiful, beautiful fighting knife. I love this thing. Beautifully balanced. I, I uh, really like Douglas's work. All right. So that is the medium A2D medium fighter. Next up from our good friends in North Kakalaki, this is the Spartan Harsey uh, dagger uh, designed by the great and powerful Bill Harsey and made by the amazing Spartan blades. Um, before I move on to the knife, let me just show you. This is a Chattanooga leatherworks sheath. It is incredible. I love every Chattanooga leatherworks sheath I've ever laid my hands on. Uh, this is owned by the, um, the RMJ family of brands. So RMJ uh, um, and then the, all the tomahawk stuff, you know, American tomahawk and um, Chattanooga Leatherworks. Beautiful sheaths. But let's talk about this knife. Mm, mm, mm. Just a classic dagger design by Bill Harsey himself. This one is one. Oh, man, I'm so bad at measuring. This is six inches long. That blade is six inches. Double edge, hollow ground. It's it's a stage fright thing, guys. I can I can measure <laughs> ordinarily, but then when I'm counting in front of you, I get all nervous. I don't know why. Uh, S35 VN. You've got the Harzi logo. That's the tree. Let's see if we can get in on that. You can see the Spartan helmet and the crossed arrows. That's the Spartan blades logo. And then next to it is a tree. That is uh, that is Bill Harzi's logo. Bill Harzi grew up in the Great Northwest in a logging family. He is a hardy dude and um yeah so that tree is his uh symbol look at this handle now i think this handle takes the dagger handle to the to the ultimate expression because it's got such a severe coke bottle and the the it it gets ever so it gets its widest right here where it breaks into the double finger choils so it gives you a lot of positive backward grip if you hold it like like this, this sort of traditional dagger style, almost like a drumstick, if you will, um, and even if you won't. Uh, it's great, and it's perfectly jimped. So the shape of these uh, finger swales and then how it meets the most bulbous part of the center um, really locks your hand in. And then you turn it on its side and look at it this way, and it really flares out in the palm swell and then gets thin on the, on the backward taper before it gets large again. I mean, this thing is, he must have labored over this handle. It looks so obvious, but it there are some subtleties here that you really feel. Um, and then that blade, hollow ground, which optimizes the slashing capability on a dagger. Daggers are not uh, meant for slashing as much as they are for thrusting. Um, and so are oftentimes very stout so as not to break on a thrust, 
but in doing so, it's oblique and thick behind the edge, and uh, you get less slash. But something like this, something like that push dagger I showed you, uh, where it's hollow ground, um, you get a lot more mileage in a slash. So this is the the beautiful Spartan Harzy dagger. That's a full tang, uh, full tang blade. The blade protrudes right down at the bottom in a sort of triangular noggin knocker there but it's encased completely in g10 which is pretty cool all right so putting that down what a handsome handsome group of fighting knives okay next up one of the well i would say probably the most classic here uh, the next two are the most classics uh in my collection and these are randall made knives a lot of people think, oh, Randall's, they're, they're old-fashioned and they're no good, and those people are wrong. Uh, this is a an incredible sheath, first of all. You've got your stamp there. This is the number uh, seven. Seven refers to the length of the blade. Uh, this model is the number 16 Special Fighter. Uh, a number 16 looks like the uh, regular number 16 looks like this in handle only. The blade is a long... Um, well, not long, but the blade is a spear point with a saw on the back meant for diving. Kind of a funny thing to, to go diving with a brass hilted knife with my car to handles. But I guess it's old school. <clears throat> on this special fighter, they took the number one blade, which is this uh, Bowie style blade, clip point blade that is sharpened. Uh, the swedge is sharpened, fully sharpened up to here up to the uh, break of the clip. And then you have a hollow ground. Oh, wait, no, wait. No, this is flat ground. I'm sorry. Uh, flat ground edge, and you have a classic fighter here. This handle really locks you in with those finger grooves, and they work for my hands. I've also, um, uh, there's a guy at work who I love to show my knives to. He's got big hands, and this fits well in his hand. You know, I think that dedicated finger notches like this can be can be tricky because if you don't have the right spacing the right size of finger groove it could be uh, just a painful mess to try and get your fingers to cooperate um, but this one they they hit the magic mean and uh, it works it works great I love this knife this special fighter uh, I sort of lucked out in getting it um, this is one of those knives that uh, I've always wanted, or I've always wanted a number one, but I've always wanted a number 14 attack, and that has a similar handle to this. So I got a number one blade with a, a 16 handle. The 16 handle looks like the 14 handle, so I made out. Yeah, that's how I justify it. Okay, next up is, is a true classic, and this is a this is a Randall that I would have ordered exactly like this. So this was actually the luck out, because if you order a knife from Randall, you got to wait five years to get it. This one uh, they just had at Knife Center, and it's exactly what I would have gotten for a number two. This is the number two Fighting Stiletto by Randall Made Knives. I'm going to move this. Look at that classic. It's got a classic dagger shape. And both edges of that dagger shape have a bit of belly. So the edges, uh, the sharp edges are parallel, nearly par parallel most of the way down. And then um, as they come in towards the tip, give you a bit of belly uh, so that this is a good slasher. Now, if you look at the base of the blade, the Ricasso, you can see how it flares out, giving you a lot more room. So this, these two bevels are hollow ground. Again, optimizing... Uh, the the slashing and cutting power of the dagger, though it is pretty stout blade stock. By the way, that Ricasso there allows you to choke up like this. And on a dagger, you, you might not want to be doing that, but definitely on um, a knife like this, which is not just a fighter, you might be using this for utility also. Uh, coming up on that, on that uh, Ricasso is is a valuable thing also there's something called the randall fighting method where they turn it around i wouldn't with this because of the those finger grooves but they turn it around like this and use the sharpened swedge percussively and then use the uh the primary edge as a backslashing 
uh, thing. Uh, I think it's something that was taught during World War II, if I'm not mistaken. That's what I remember CM talking about in one of his videos back in the day. Um, I think it's interesting. Uh, I, I don't think I would do that unless I was trained. Uh, stacked leather handle, so beautiful. Symmetrical brass um, cross guard, keeping your hand where it needs to be when you're when you're fighting with this thing. Uh, and a commando shaped handle. They have different shaped handles for these knives. This one, this sort of symmetrical handle with the butt cap, is called the commando style. Commando, kind of funny. All right, I'm gonna put that here. We all we all like commando style every once in a while, don't we? All right, next up is my most prized of all of these. This is my hog tooth knife, hog tooth knives sub hilt fighter uh, made custom for me um, by Matt Chase of Hog Tooth Knives for my birthday last year, uh, last August. A gorgeous uh, Damascus blade made of 1095 and 15 and 20. And he did a whole bunch of cool uh, things to get this crazy pattern. And that long slender clip point blade is razor sharp on both edges all the way up to the Ricasso. Both uh, bevels are um, also hollow ground, which makes it thinner behind the edge, which makes the slash more effective. And uh, and then this uh, designed and well, uh, sort of imagined up by Bob Loveless, the you know knife legend. This sub hilt here that you use to extract the blade uh, after a thrust, uh, if it gets tangled up in a in some sort of engagement but also you can use it if you're doing that sort of daggery um sort of manipulation in your hand you have another uh, access point there to grab onto this one of course has stag and that wrought iron from the longfellow bridge in boston and uh yeah i said boston it just sort of came out like i'm like i'm a bostonian i'm not uh spent the summer of 1991 there that qualifies me right uh, just a wicked, wicked fighting knife. I often jokingly say if I were ever called out to a duel uh, to restore the family honor, this would be the knife I would bring, you know, assuming it's a knife duel, of course. Uh, OK, two more. Uh, this one's been with me a long time uh, since, well, for at least 15 years. This is my Cold Steel Laredo Bowie. First of all, if you get one these days, you're not going to get this 100% cherry leather sheath with the awesome belt retention stud. You can't find anything like that stud. Uh, my brother was looking for one for one uh, sheath he was making me. Uh, but anyway, it's welted sheath, as you can see. Very nice leather. Uh, just awesome. I love that sheath. But here is the blade. Uh, this is not a camp Bowie. This is not a, uh, you know, chore chopper. This is a dedicated fighting Bowie. You can tell by the length. It's a 10 inch blade and you can tell by the slenderness of it. It is long and slender with a balance just forward of the guard. Actually, it's a little further than forward of the guard, actually, but <clears throat> feels very, very lively in the hand. This is five sixteenths of an inch thick. It's very, very thick. Sorry, three sixteenths of an inch thick. It's very, very thick. Uh, and no, no, five. Oh my God, I'm such a reject. It's very thick, thicker than a quarter inch. Someone help me, Dad, help me. Uh, here, this is uh, almost a zero ground swedge, so you can really do some damage on a back cut, on a on a flicking back motion, which is uh, part and parcel of the way. Uh, Bowies are used for fighting. That was the development of that clip up there. This is 01 tool steel, I believe. I put a nice uh, force patina on it uh, using uh, white vinegar, I believe. And the Cocobolo, a faux Cocobolo handle, some sort of uh, composite wood here, uh, came to me cracked years ago. And I was such a junkie. I was like, I don't want to send it back. That means I won't have it for a while. So I always kept it. I was like, oh, that's part of its character. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, just a junkie always. Uh, put on some skateboard tape. I used to have some on both sides and eh, started to take it off. I don't really need it on there, but I left it on the palm. Brass guard. This thing is just here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold it in front of the main camera. 
I mean, this is, uh, you know, this is before I got the sub hilt fighter. This was my, my dual fighting knife, you know. I hope you're laughing because that was intended uh, for laughter. Okay, the last one I'm going to show here is uh, from my uh, Philip traditional Filipino weapons Espada Idaga uh, set. Espada Idaga means uh, sword and dagger set. Um, this one is wearing a beautiful leather sheath that my brother made. Uh, he made me a set, you know, because the Espada Idaga come in a basically a block of wood sheath. And I was like, I want something that I can carry into battle. And he's like, okay. And he made me this awesome set of leather sheaths on a belt with a pouch with a sharpening stone. And it's pretty, pretty damn sweet. Um, but I'm going to take it out of this gorgeous sheath and show you the blade. This long, sharp, crazy sharp, sinuous blade. It's a Filipino just i don't know what it is uh in terms of they say daga like dagger but it it's not a dagger like i know it's not double-edged but it has a long uh slender pointy blade this thing is incredible to swing around and uh, as long as no one's around the cat's uh you know locked out of the room and dog's not there the kids are playing somewhere else uh, this is a great knife to swing around. Same thing with its big brother, the sword, because of that pommel. It's camagong, I believe, camagong wood. And uh, the shape is just perfect. It's perfect. The, this swale down here nestles into your palm, so you get some angle down on that blade. Uh, your pinky locks into this little hook here, and uh, you get this little bit of extra weight on the end with that extra wood. I love the... Uh, the pommels and hilts of Filipino weapons. They're just, they look beautiful, but they're there for a purpose. Like that shape is so perfect for swinging this and getting extra, extra angle on the blade. Uh, but it's a little bit long and it gives you extra purchase too, you know, for control. So uh, this knife is, is amazing. I don't know what to call it. A Filipino bolo knife kind of thing. It doesn't look too much like a bolo. But uh, it's mine, and it is one of my favorite fixed blade fighting knives. So that uh, that's it. That does it. That's a messy, messy pile of fixed blade knives. I I will spare you the rattling through them, but I find that they break up into two uh, general categories for me: those that are optimized for reverse grip, like the smaller ones, and then those that are optimized for uh, forward grip, the larger ones. Uh, some of these large knives you can hold in, you know. Uh, reverse grip but it it feels weird it feels like i don't really know where that tip is and uh there you get real no real benefit from slashing in reverse grip even though it looks cool in the movies you just you're just slashing with a much uh shorter at a much shorter range with a much shorter weapon so uh longer forward grip shorter reverse grip Okay, I have spoken. Uh, thanks for watching, of course, uh, and thanks for uh, checking out all these fixed blade knives. I really love fixed blade knives, and even if even if folders are are your jam, you should have at least one or two fixed blades in uh, in your in your panoply. Uh, yeah, coming up, uh, episode two ninety four of the Knife Junkie Podcast. We're talking to KC of Tempest Knives. You know him uh, from his Knives Fast channel. He's a great guy, great member of the community of knife reviewers here on youtube who has designed a 100 percent unique and useful knife i have a, a video up here on the channel of the mock one uh, mock 51 he comes on the show he's got a uh, kickstarter for his design we talk all about it great to have casey on the show also check out thursday night knives tomorrow night where we give away uh, this uh, uh, ni uh collector knives swing guard prototype um so that's it. Become a patron. Check us out on Patreon, theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon, or, uh, or scan your, your phone right here. All right. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. 
Check out some great knife photos on the knifejunkie.com slash Instagram and join our Facebook group at the knifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.